Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, super excited to have you all on the webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how to get automated referrals with staffing referrals, Curefish, and Bullhorn. Super excited to have all of you on the webinar. A couple of housekeeping items to get started. Uh, first of all, uh, if you guys have any questions at all, drop those into the chat. We will be answering them at the end of the webinar. Second, uh, if you happen to want to share this with one of your colleagues, uh, feel free to, uh, we'll be sending out an email with the recording early next week. And number three, uh, thanks so much for joining. I know it's been a crazy week. It's a crazy time in the staffing industry. Uh, and we're very grateful to have all of you on this call talking about how to grow your staffing firm faster. So with that, our agenda, first we're gonna go over some quick introductions. Then we'll be talking about the digital transformation, why you need automated referral management, and then the meat of the conversation, we're going to be jumping into the panelist discussion, uh, which we're super excited about. And then we just have a few takeaways to end the uh, webinar with. I'm David Falwell. I'm the president and founder of Staffing Referrals. Uh, we help staffing agencies like yours get more referrals. Uh, we work with businesses of all sizes and across all verticals, and we'd love to partner with you and help you grow your referral base. I'm joined with the co-host, uh, Travis Arnold, who's Arnold, who's the co-founder of Herefish. And with that, I'll let you give a little background, Travis. Yep, thanks, Dave. Uh, my name is Travis. I, I've, uh, like, like you said, I'm co-founder of Herefish. I've been in the staffing tech space from one way or the other since uh, 2007. Um, obviously, if you don't know about Herefish, we were purchased by Bullhorn earlier this year, and we've helped uh, thousands of, of staffing firms automate a lot of the busy work that, that exists um, throughout the recruiting process. Awesome, thanks so much, Travis. Super excited to have you here today. And we're also joined with our panelists. Uh, super grateful to have all of you on the call. Uh, we have Anastasia, Tim, and Alicia. And Anastasia, I will let you kick it off a little uh, history on uh, yourself and Resource One. Hi, everybody. I'm Anastasia Valentine. I am the president and managing partner of Resource One. Thanks for inviting us to this uh, presentation. We are an IT staffing firm that's been incorporated since 1982, that has been very involved in uh, digital transformation and building uh, technical architecture with Bullhorn, Herefish, and about uh, 20 other uh, business partners out there, staffing referrals as well. So it's, it's exciting to be on this call with staffing referrals as we were with this organization from the inception. And uh, it's great to see uh, where they are today, and I'm excited to tell you how they've impacted our environment. Thanks so much, Anastasia. Super happy to have you on the call. Uh, and how about you, Tom? Hey, thanks, David. Uh, first, thank you, David and Travis and Bullhorn and uh, Staffing Referrals for having us on. Uh, my name is Tim Glenny, managing partner, co-founder of Bridgeview IT. We're a technology consulting company based out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, we focus on working with uh, enterprise-level clients throughout the U.S., helping them with project outsourcing, collaboration, uh, search for technology leadership roles and uh, individual contributors, and uh, also up help building out their teams through staff augmentation. Uh, really excited to be on the call today. Uh, we've been a partner with Bullhorn for over a decade and worked with uh, extensively with all of the marketplace partners, including Herefish, we were one of their first customers and got to work with uh, Travis and Jason from the early days. Um, also know Anastasia through the industry, so very excited to be on the panel. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. And how about you, Alicia? Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Ganad, and I am with MAS Medical Staffing. So we are a nurse in allied health professional staffing company where we place them around the US and also offer per diem staffing. Um, we're also a newer customer with staffing referrals. We're coming up, I think, around one year with them. So I'm excited to kind of talk about our story and you know how we've incorporated this program for our recruiters. Thanks so much, Alicia. And thank you all for joining us. Um, you guys, uh, all of your companies are leaders in the industry and you guys are really looking at how to approach the digital transformation in new ways. And I'm super excited to have all of you on the call with us. Uh, we're gonna jump into just a couple slides and then get to, back to the panelist discussion here. So as you all know, we now live in the most digitally connected time in history. Uh, and to kind of prove this point, every minute 570 new websites are created, 188 emails are sent, and 12 new businesses are launched. I'm always blown away by that last one. The idea of having 12 potential new competitors coming online every minute is uh, a little scary. 
Um, and this has really changed how business has done and what's going on. Uh, research shows that since 2000, 52% of companies in the Fortune 500 have either gone bankrupt, been acquired, or ceased to exist as a result of the digital disruption. And the digital disruption or digital transformation is really impacting every industry, uh, and staffing is no different. Um, the one thing that we do know, though, as, as the digital transformation is happening throughout industries, leaders are using new tools to grow faster. And one common thread that we've identified is a lot of the fastest growing business firms uh, are, a lot of the fastest growing businesses are using digital referral programs. Uh, for example, Airbnb increased their daily bookings by 300% with their referral program. Uh, Dropbox increased signups by 60% when they implemented a digital referral program. Tesla has grown without a marketing budget by relying on their customers and referral program to spread the word. And what you can see is that modern businesses understand the power of recommendations from friends and family, uh, which is super important and something that when you think about how is this impacting the staffing industry? Well, what, as we shift from analog to digital in the staffing industry, we've really gone from in-person interviews to now what I would suggest I'd, most firms, if you want, or most agencies, if you want to compete, you're looking at using a multi-channel sourcing strategy. And when we look at multi, the multiple sources and the new sourcing strategy, a lot of agencies are looking at referrals. They're using social media more often. They're going to automation or programmatic advertising. Uh, but what we believe here at Staffing Referrals is that referrals are the number one source. Um, and staffing agencies actually rated it as the number one source last year. And the reason for this is because they're 55% faster to hire. Uh, you can increase your retention by 70%. And you can save up to $3,000 uh, per hire versus a traditional job board. So today we're going to be talking about how sourcing referrals digitally, how this has changed and with the digital transformation. And really this is what we consider going from analog referrals or kind of the outdated way of doing referrals to using automated referral management, which I believe in the next one to three years, 70 to 90% of staffing agencies will be using some form of automated referral management. So really, it's kind of thinking about this as a new way of sourcing. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass over to Travis to talk a little bit about how people are using staffing referrals and Hearfish before we jump into the panel. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. Get, I want to get to the panel. But um, a couple of ways people use Hearfish and staffing referrals together, uh, I'm gonna, we'll talk about. So one is like post hire. So you have a new contractor going on assignment. You want to capture that lightning. You want to capture that excitement. So they give you a great satisfaction score, a high NPS score. That's the perfect time to ask for a referral. You want to drive more people that are, that mirror that person. So people usually hang out with people that are, are similar to them or at least have the same skill sets. Uh, another area that we see our customers gravitate towards are nurturing their existing talent pool. And part of that is you know trying to drive referrals from a, a pool of old old employees, old contractors, uh, silver medalists are, are, are great untapped resources that um, automation can help drive the conversation to drive referrals ultimately. So those are some areas that people naturally gravitate towards, kind of the pre-hire side and post-hire side of, the, of the, the process. Awesome, thanks so much, Travis. And with that, just a quick recap, uh, with staffing referrals in Herefish, uh, you can find qualified talent faster, you can save time with recruiter automation and get up to 57% more referrals. And with that, now for the important part of today, uh, super excited to have our panelists discussion. Thank you again all for joining. Um, so Travis, I think I'll let you kind of kick it off with uh, some of the questions. Awesome, sounds good. So. One thing at Bullhorn we're always looking to do is help people level up. How, how do people approach this digital disruption or digital transformation process? What's that look like? So I'm going to pose this first question for Anastasia. She's she's been she's been around the block with a lot of different tools in the Bullhorn ecosystem and then outside of that. So um, for you, Anastasia, how has your company approached digital transformation? What does that process look like? So digital transformation ha has taken a considerable amount of time to implement, but I believe that implementing it correctly, you have to kind of build it like a building block. Um, we use Bullhorn as a critical piece to our digital transformation in making our ATS and CRM the actual source of truth for all of our data. 
And then we've added on various pieces of software, such as staffing referrals to automate processes within our industry to make us more efficient. So in, in our case, we had to really look at digital transformation and say, this is fundamentally taking every piece of recruiting and implementing some type of digital process into the organization and completely transforming how we know staffing to be. Um, the one thing I could tell you with digital transformation is that it's a commitment from the highest level of an organization. Everybody has to be embedded in it. And keep in mind that innovation itself isn't just digital transformation, it's a piece of digital transformation. So you wanna be mindful. Um, at this point, we've been business partners with Bullhorn, I believe eight years. We've been an early adopter of Herefish. Uh, I, I hope Travis would think that we were instrumental in some ways um, in helping them build out their technology. We uh, were instrumental with David and we've been, Absolutely. An, early, yeah, we've been an early adopter of, of the Bullhorn Marketplace. And I'll tell you, it's a fabulous place to be. Um, so digital transformation and referrals for us has, has automated a process that was completely, as David would say, analog. Um, I haven't heard that back until uh, 20 years ago when I was re a recruiter for Ameritech and Motorola, but uh, I'm glad we're not <laughs> analog anymore with the phone systems. But uh, with that said, uh, digital transformation is, is excellent. And I think as you build your architecture and implement each piece of software one by one, you're going to notice that things look very different in how your organization operates, but it actually is is it's really exciting to see what that looks like. Got it. So it sounds like it's a little more strategic. Uh, it's not necessarily the 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 process of actually just implementing the tools. It's actually at a, at a strategic level, making sure all these tools are working together and doing having the right business outcome. Um, just just to follow up on that, it, not only is it strategic, but every time you add a piece of software, it changes the way that you do your business, but for the better. So every time you add a piece of software, like a staffing referrals, you're removing all of this manual effort and labor, all these extra clicks, all this extra time, and the process and the automation drives itself. So our producers find a lot of time available to them to really focus on critical tasks. And um, we've really noticed that our referral program has benefited from that not only uh, from the automation, but now it's on everybody's mind. So we're asking for referrals for new clients. We're asking for referrals for new candidates. You know, we're, we're rewarding our internal people in the referral process now to where if they bring in information, they can win money. So it's now become part of our digital transformation culture. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, Tim, do you have any thoughts on transformations? Let me take myself off of mute there. Yeah, some great <laughs> observations by Anastasia there. Um, you know, when I look at digital transformation, you know, it's a, it's a newer term, but I, I think it's a great process that, that has a great set of tools in it to really help uh, solve business problems that we have within our industry. Um, so what we do is look at use cases like we're, we're in the relationship business, right? Which referrals are a huge piece of. And we want to take as much friction out of the process as, po as possible, you know, through using automation. So our team could be working to build the right relationships to get the right results for our clients. Uh, for me, it always starts with a single source of truth. Uh, in our case, it's Bullhorn, which is our ATS. You know, we have over 300,000 candidates in there and 12,000 clients. And the end of the day, everything has to come back to Bullhorn. Um, you know, they've got a great open API uh, that's enabled the marketplace to take birth. And, you know, we've been an early adopter of it, uh, whether through partners in the, the ecosystem there or own, our own tools that we built out over 10 years ago off of the API. So, um, you know, seeing companies like Herefish come up, you know, from the early days talking with Jason and, and Travis and just realizing what's possible, you know, they've really been a, a big game changer in the space of, you know, how we can view based on a you know, some different use cases and like, hey, you want to get in touch with, you know, candidates at a certain stage in the process and start a nurturing campaign or get the right content to them or the right job at the right point in the process. And, um, you know, with staffing referrals, I look at it as a great tool. Again, you figure out where it makes sense in your process to start to cultivate 
uh, those referrals. And, you know, you have the, the choice with, with staff referrals to do it at the beginning or the middle or at the end of the process. You know, Travis made, made a comment, you know, kind of hit them while they're high. Uh, you know, if you get a great NPS score uh, from a candidate or a client, you know, what better time to ask for a referral than that? You know, and uh, you could set up an easy trigger. Hey, thanks for rating us high. Uh, glad you would refer us to a friend. With that being said, who would you like to refer us to? And, uh, you know, the staffing referrals tool creates a, you know, it's a really transparent uh, system to let, you know, the, the referrer and, and us know what's going on and how to take action on it. Very cool. Uh, Alicia, you want to kind of round out question one? Definitely. So for digital transformation with MAS, a couple of years ago, we started just kind of saying, hey, what is in our tech stack? What are we using? Um, and what is it bringing? What's the ROI on that? Um, last year, uh, referrals were one of our top lead sources and we were not tracking it. It was just kind of happening. We're bringing it, word of mouth was happening. Nurses were referring people to us, to their recruiters. Um, the biggest thing with us is a relationship with the recruiter. It, you know, it's a long-term relationship that a traveler is having with the recruiter. And we weren't tracking our referrals and bringing on staffing referrals and allowing all this digital automation to happen on the back end. It's giving resources to not only our recruiters, but it's giving resources to our field staff and our nurses and our allied health professionals to talk about us openly, to send links out. It's not just word of mouth anymore. They're they're talking about us and being able to send out some type of link, some type of resources that they can easily apply and easily get that conversation going with the recruiter that was referred. Um, another thing with digital trans transformation is, you know, all these programs are great, but if you don't have the training and the resources to back it up for your employees, you know, then you kind of fall short. So we've consistently offered training and support to all of our employees. So they kind of, they have awareness of these programs that we're buying and utilizing for them. And that's helped us immensely. That's, that's great, Alicia. And, and all three of you, I think are kind of leaders in the space of how to, uh, you have good examples of how to take new technology, identify what's needed and then uh, implement it strategically and effectively. Um, and with that, um, if you could just each share a little bit about kind of what your adoption process is for new technology, because I know that's something when we're talking with staffing firms or staffing agencies, we're frequently here, uh, you know, yeah, we love it. We want to do this, but we're worried about adoption with the team. Um, and I think all three of you have solved that in a pretty meaningful way. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and kick it off, Tim, if you wanted to tell a little bit about how you make sure uh, technology is adopted correctly. Yeah, sure. Thanks, David. I, I think the biggest thing is getting buy-in from the team. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, the leader in our organization for going through seeking out new technologies, you know, really finding out if they pass the smell test and going through, you know, doing the initial demos with the potential partners. Um, but then early, you know, really going to the team and saying, hey, we, we think this might be really good. Uh, tool, but it's another thing. Does it really work? And then, you know, I'm sitting in a leadership seat, so I have to realize, you know, you know, my team, you know, they've already got a lot going on in their day to day and they have to see how is this going to impact them, right? Is, is it a positive impact? Does it eliminate work for them? Does it give them 10% more time to work? Does it increase their output or their success rate? And, you, you know, we're definitely driven in an industry where people want to see the success and how it matches to them, which is getting more candidates getting more interviews, getting more placements and having, you know, finding the right candidates and being successful. So um, I, I think a lot of times, and I've just seen with, with some of my friendly competitors that they, they get a tool, it could be the greatest tool in the world, but if the team doesn't buy in, it'll fail. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And what are your thoughts, Anastasia? Oh, you know, I, I would agree with a lot of what Tim said, but I'd add this on. Whenever we have brought a technology into our organization, it really came down to were there less steps for somebody's job role? Is it a seamless integration? And is the data transparent? What I've noticed is, is that people tend to adopt technology when it's an easy adoption. And so whatever it is, you wanna make it fluid within your ATS or CRM, wherever you're putting it in there and you wanna make it transparent. And then people have a tendency as they're going through their screen 
you know, as they're qualifying a candidate, it's real easy to click on our button and say, would you like to be part of our staffing referrals program? You know, yes, click, boom, right from the ATS, that workflow starts, or right from our signature tag, or right in our, or right in our website. So all of this, the technology that you add has to nurture itself and be um, minimal disruption to the flow of someone's primary work. And then I find that they're more uh, willing to accept it and adopt it, but you can't build a huge architecture with special rules for 10, 15, 20 pieces of software. And it has to all be one fluid environment. And that's really what I believe digital transformation starts to look like uh, when you start building your technology. It just becomes part of the ecosystem. Yeah, and, and Anastasia, I have to uh, give you uh, credit and thank that part of our product development with staffing referrals was actually guided by Anastasia uh, in terms of building the process for invites and uh, the management of staffing referrals directly into the ATS and trying to make it so there's as little recruiter behavioral change as possible. Um, and that was all uh, guidance from you. So I appreciate your, uh, your foresight on that. Um, Alicia, what are fabulous. your thoughts in terms we of- We love it. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> Not only can we see in the ATS who we've invited, we can also see in the ATS now through David's development, who's accepted and who's in the program. So every candidate that you're going through, you can see whether they've been invited and whether they're currently participating. And you can look in the notes and see all of the Herefish campaigns that have been sent out in conjunction with staffing referrals for all of our programming and communication. So it's all right there in Bullhorn. It's all transparent. Uh, it's fabulous. It doesn't take anyone any effort to adopt staffing referrals. What are you going to adopt? It's there. It's workflow now. I love hearing that. Yeah, <laughs> how, about, how about you, Alicia? How, what's your adoption uh, process or, or strategy? I mean, Anastasia, you kind of hit it was spot on right there. With technology with us, um, like I said, the past couple of years, I have taken many demos and we've looked at many different, you know, technology programs that we could potentially use. And the biggest thing with us has always been what does that integration look like with Bullhorn and how can we run this on the back end without shaking up everybody's day, day to day? Uh, staffing referrals, you know from our first couple calls, the, the integration was almost as seamless as a click of a button. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want to take on a new program, this new technology and spend all this money. And then our recruiters aren't utilizing it or they forgot about it. Um, and this is, you know, running on the back end, like I said, for our recruiters, you know, we invite, it's all invited through email automation. So, so we're not shaking up anyone's day-to-day -day. there a, and it's just an, a benefit for our recruiters to be able to be using these programs um so like i said anastasia you kind of you're spot on with that i mean it the adapting to this technology is the most important part um for any team yeah we definitely uh in terms of i guess areas to watch out for those of you that are listening on this call um there are times where people you know buy technology and it doesn't work and one kind of funny story on that front, and uh, you guys mentioned the net promoter scores. We definitely had a staffing agency that bought our software and uh, they were like, oh, it's not working. And we asked what their net promoter score and it was negative 15. Uh, so one thing you also might wanna think about is uh, do people like working with your company? Uh, if, and if you don't have people that love working with your company, which clearly all three of you have uh, high net promoter scores, um, that's where referrals can really drive a lot more value. Uh, but if you uh, if the brand's not in a good spot, you might want to start there and think about referrals down the road. So uh, something to be strategic about as well. Um, so up next, and you guys have already kind of touched on this a little bit um, with different avenues. Uh, but you know, when you think about uh, Herefish, Bullhorn, and staffing referrals, um, what were kind of the drivers for choosing any of these softwares or combining these together? And uh, we'll go ahead and kick it off with you, Alicia. So. For us, I know I think I just touched on this a little bit, but um, the ease of use for our staff. Um, we expect a lot of out, of out of our recruiters day to day so they can hit their numbers. And um, our number one thing here is customer experience as well for our field staff and our nurses, as well as growth for our recruiters. Um, staffing referrals for us 
was kind of just like an add on, but it's providing all these benefits. Um, our nurses we don't just hire them and then they're gone. They kind of stick with our company. They're on 13 weeks, week assignments or they're working week to week per diem. So we wanted to provide a resource to them as well to be able to talk about us. Like I said, referrals for us were our number one. I think they beat our website applications in two, 2019. <laughs> um, so we ended up doing a new website as well to kind of adhere to that and to, to promote that way. Um, so for our nurses to be able to feel like they're a part of a team that was super important to me and super important to our recruiters. We have some nurses that are referring, you know, up towards of a hundred people while they're on the job working for us. Um, so that's been super helpful for us. That, that's great, Alicia. And, and it is interesting when you bring up the nurses having like a hundred referrals. We, we have found that in uh, the kind of referral world uh, that brand ambassadors sometimes will end up being you know, the, we're used to the 80-20 rule uh, with brand ambassadors. We've found that it's more like the 90-10 rule, that 10% of your brand ambassadors will do 90% of the lifting, that people will get really engaged and be sharing their link on multiple channels. But yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, Lisa. it definitely uh, excited and, our nurses um, as well as our recruiters. I, I feel like they're talking about it more than ever when before it was kind of like, oh yeah, you can refer somebody if you want to. But now it's like, hey, you can make extra cash on top of all these amazing benefits you're getting with us. Love it. Love it. And how about you, Tim? I hope we got you on mute. Yep, yep, no worries. Uh, I'll start with Herefish. Um, you, you know, the, the problem that they were solving is, you know, we're in the technology space and it's, you know, been really low tech unemployment for six years. And so, you know, candidates are just hearing from everybody all the time. And one of the challenges for recruiters, you know, you know is they reach out a certain amount of time and you know, there's fatigue from leaving messages or emails. And when we're able to start them on nurturing campaigns within Herefish um, and really base it on actions, you know, so if we had left a message for somebody after a certain amount of days, put them in this automation, you know, so the recruiters can keep trying to reach out to other folks. And then these folks that they've already identified, you know, we're getting good communications out to them, you know, to further the process that it had really good success with that and, and just had a lot of analytics that would tell us what's working, what's not working and, and how do you tweak it, right? Um, and then with staffing referrals, um, you know, we had a somewhat sophisticated process to track them, but nowhere near what, what you guys did. And I think the big piece with staffing referrals is it gives just transparency to the person who's giving the referrals. Um, you know, they get their own brand ambassador page, they get uh, a dashboard to know what status their referrals are in. You know, Alicia was talking about some success with, you know, you know, one nurse referring a bunch of people. They can see, well, that's great, but is Alicia's company or my company calling the referrals and, and how are they progressing throughout the process? And then when would a referral bonus be due? And to make sure that they know that and they, they get the referral for their work. And so, you know, it's something you, you guys just did something that, you know, we didn't even know was possible and it's, it's, it's a great system. I appreciate all of that. And uh, you've done a, a, in terms of, we look at partners that we work with and how you were strategic with implementing it. We uh, appreciate working with people like you. <laughs> so, great. Um, you. and um, Anastasia, how about you? So um, I believe the question is why, or why did we choose staffing referrals here, Bush Bullhorn? Right, yeah. the, the three is that, okay. So I'm gonna take a different angle on this and I'm gonna talk about uh, the combination of technology for my ability <clears throat> to see data. So in this case, when selecting staffing referrals, we pick staffing referrals, obviously as our referral platform. We look at Herefish and we take Herefish as an inbound and outbound aggregation of information and communication. So for example, Somebody comes in, clicks into staffing referrals, right? There's different ways that it travels into our database and into our ATS and where it's marked in a status where it comes from. In the case of outbound communication, where we're driving people through our program through Herefish, it's really great to reach out to that group. When they come back in, they're coming through a very specific portal of Herefish where we can see on our website, all of our analytics and our Google analytics we build a special spooler in the back end through a Daxter product, which is also another marketplace partner. And it lands right in our ATS with exactly where and how 
this person made it into our system. And the, you know, the path is very transparent. We can watch all of our data points and how referrals get into our ATS, whether they're coming in from outbound, you know, us inviting through an ATS, whether they're coming in through our website, whether they're coming in through a signature tag, we can actually watch a lot of this information, uh, collect that data, and then we can look at it and say, all right, what's the biggest or best way that we can solicit people? Or are they more responsive to being invited or are they more apt to come in and do it organically? So for, for me, in, in the case of all three partners, they all serve an expertise in the partnership that is unique from each other. One houses my data, one transports my data, and one has a program of referrals that starts that data process. So, and they're all good. And so that's why they're here. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, sense. I think Bullhorn's done one. Uh, that does make sense. I, and the one thing that uh, we've loved about Bullhorn as a uh, uh, marketplace partner is the ability to work with their API, the openness of how you can kind of connect and integrate and customize things. I know we've done a lot of kind of customization down to which status or field do you want to trigger events and um, uh, Travis can talk about that a little bit more, but I'll kind of kick it over to you for the, the next question here. So, Yeah, for sure. And just to, to latch onto that, as a former Bullhorn Marketplace uh, partner, I mean, we the, the growth we were able to achieve and how we were able to reach that base and like explain to them how, how, how automation can completely transform the business. It wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for for the marketplace and it wasn't for the infrastructure that Bullhorn's put out there. So, uh, definitely a definitely a big fan, big promoter for that for for life probably. Um, so, one question we feel a ton when people come into the fray of like, "Hey, I'm thinking about automation, but it seems like I'm going to be communicating with people and blasting them stuff." And it's, it, there's a balance there, right? So, I'd love to hear uh, Tim. I'll, I'll kick it over to you. Like, how do you balance? The communication and the process of uh, reaching out to candidates and clients, and and kind of fill fill the, those communication gaps and those touch points with automation. Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know your your candidates and your clients are your, your best assets, and you know we all get inundated you know daily with you know all types of retargeting emails and things of that nature. So we're we're really thoughtful of when a trigger kicks off. Um, you know whether it's from Herefish or uh, staffing referrals. We use another uh, program called Great Recruiters in the Process, which is another marketplace partner. And, you know, like Travis was talking about earlier, um, you, you know, a tool like um, staffing referrals, you want to say, well, how big of an audience do you want to get that out to, right? And is, is your audience, you know, typically gets more narrow as you go through the, the process. So we, we typically use um, staffing referrals earlier in the process so we can get to a wider pool with it because you may talk to a candidate and they're not a fit, but you want to find out maybe they have a friend that is a fit and, you know, they could help make a good match there and, and get a, get a nice bonus for doing so. Um, and, and, you know, with the, the Herefish campaigns, cause we use it both on the candidate and the client side, um, you know, we're very careful to put rules about, you know, if there's a net new client, when are they getting communicated to, right? Because your sales team is trying to do their organic outreach and you want to be careful about how much marketing communication they're getting right off the bat. So um, we set some very intentional rules around that. Um, once people are, you know, you know, you know, they're interacting with the post, you know, you have an automatic score from here fish and you can say, Hey, if they're over, you know, 80% score, you know, keep them in this drip campaign. They like what we're sending them. Um, and I think it's also important, you know, not just to use templates. I mean, there has to be, it's one thing to send people something, but you have to send something that's relevant to them and not just for your purpose. And so, you, you know, we're very intentional from our marketing department to, to create valuable content um, that gives a value back to the audience. And it isn't, isn't about helping us, you know, we're helping them and then letting them know that we have these other programs, you know, like staff and referrals that they could be part of, or, you know, different um, efforts that we put out through here fish. So I think it's really being intentional about, your campaigns and looking at what your opt-outs are, your bounce or your engagements are, and, and just being in tune with your audience. Got it. Yeah, and I, I like to kind of approach it. Like, I think the hard work happens on the whiteboard. So you have this giant process, you have all these touch points that happen from the minute somebody sourced all the way through them getting hired. And that, that work you do on the whiteboard, you need to figure like that out first. And then you could have the right tools and, and kind of pull those together. 
and figure out, okay, what, what's triggering when and what's that trigger going to be? Uh, I think, Tim, you do a great job. Obviously, I've seen from, from client number one to today, you know, how you've progressed and, and shown yeah. that, that, that change. Very cool. So I'll kick it over yeah, to you. today for ne next question. Yeah, absolutely. And um, let's uh, tell us a little bit about how you're using staffing referrals and Herefish as a whole. Um, any specific use cases that you have that have been super impactful? Um, just talk a little bit about what, how you're using the two platforms. Uh, and Anastasia, I will let you kick this one off. Okay, um, real quickly uh, on, on this topic, it kind of ties back into the previous topic of how do you control communication with Herefish? And, you know, Herefish is a rules based platform. So, your data and how you do your data and where you put your data is critical in com communicating and controlling communication. So, in our example, a status may be in the case of staffing referrals in Herefish we may have a petition go out for our, our, our one alumni. So we might pick a status of our one alumni uh, and we'll go out and target our alumni on a, a big push through here on staffing referrals. We may go out through qualified uh, individuals. Uh, we may go out uh, to people that are currently working with us. And we, we divide our communication up specifically by the status that people are in and we also communicate primarily with Herefish basically off the source as well. So we may look at the source and say, well, where is this person from? Well, this person came from staffing referrals because every time someone comes into our ATS, they automatically through our technology are marked in the source as staffing referrals. And this is the power of the integration is that when your data is coming in, and if it's marked the right way, Herefish is fabulous. And then grabbing that data and launching out communication uh, outbound and then receiving it back inbound into your environment. So I guess the best way uh, I could tell you that's exactly how I'm using it. It's not hard, but there is, you know, it is important that everybody you, you know, understands that no matter what tool you use, you always want to make sure you understand what's coming into the database and how you're gonna grab that information and communicate going outbound. And so that's the best way I can answer the question is that's how we use you guys. Um, and yeah. it, it works on its own. So you gotta implement it and take some time and think about your flow. And then you can implement here fish and to really put staffing referrals on steroids. Yeah, when I think Anastasia and Tim, you guys have been, uh, and Alicia as well, but all very intentional with kind of making sure you're implementing it, looking at the touch points, doing what Travis said, you know, the, the whiteboarding and mapping it out. Um, we guys actually really did spend a lot of time up front making sure that candidates were receiving the right experience, that you didn't have overlap. So I think those are a lot of things that you see um, some agencies where they're kind of, you know, buy something and just try to throw it in and don't spend that time up front. I think it's as a, a good point that you made, Travis, and something that all of you on this call have done great, a great job with. Um, if I remember correctly, Tim, I think you had uh, a, a unique process with kind of how you were using staffing referrals in Herefish and uh, even great recruiters as well. Um, so I'll let you kind of jump in on that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think one important thing is just, you know, really getting feedback um, throughout the process. And one, one intentional thing we do uh, with Herefish is, you know, after anybody has started a, a, an assignment, uh, making sure that an MPS goes out within two weeks to the, the you know, the, the consulting resource, but also the hiring manager for them and really find out how we're doing. Um, and, and, you know, we've gotten great scores and feedback and, uh, you know, it's always a little scary to do because you, you don't know what's going to come back, but you need to hear it. And uh, we get great communications and, and we let the team know and, you know, celebrate the victories within it. Um, you know, within staffing referrals, you know, there's no doubt if you implement the tool, you're going to get more referrals. Um, but then, you know, the accountability really shifts to the team to follow up on uh, the referrals. And, you know, there's a way in combining uh, staffing referrals and here fish where you could say, okay, you know, if a referral comes in, you set a timeline. If this referral hasn't been called by X amount of time, send a reminder through here fish to the, the person that owns that referral. Um, and then you could set up, you know, a sequence of them, you know, and, and again, if it takes a couple of days and they don't take action and then, you know, in the final one, you can include their manager. So they have visibility that nothing is falling through the cracks because, you know, I mean, I could just tell you, you know, referrals are a top driver in our business. Um, 
you know, whether, however you're doing it, it, it it's the number one way to get businesses. I, I think David, you referenced at the, the start of the, the, the panel. So um, I think just really taking advantage and using both tools to make sure that once you get these referrals, that action's being taken is, is really key. I uh, could, could not agree more. And I think the, uh, the other area that Tim would just, that might be valuable for the audience is really thinking about the uh, uh, accountability when you're getting referral leads in is something that I think, I, I think this goes across the board with leads, but the fact that you're building that automation out with your fish and that you have the, yeah. your notifying manners is really something that's uh, pretty amazing as well. Um, so uh, what problems have these platforms helped you solve? Uh, and we'll go ahead and start it off with you, Tim. Back, back to you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think um, one of the big problems that they've helped solve is, you know, taking something, you know, in, in our business where there's a, you know, a lot of um, manual process, and you know, there's, you, you could lead to bad documentation uh, of how you're handling things. If you look at, like, if you have a manual process for running referrals, one of the worst things that could ever happen is if you get a great referral, goes through the process you know, and they get placed, but the person referred doesn't find out or worse, they don't get a bonus. Um, that, that'll that just kill any, you know, that will create some a real bad situation with that person. So this kind of takes that risk away, which I think is, is number one. Um, you know, the second piece, if somebody takes the time to refer somebody over and then they find out they never got contacted, again, it just creates really bad press for your company, you know, because they're, they're obviously, you know, thinking they're, they're helping you out and, you know, it's, it's not going to be a fit every time with every referral, but, you know, you're not always planning for today. You're planning for tomorrow down the road, um, you know, because if they do fit your business and this person thought they'd be good, um, it's really important to go out there and, and, and build a relationship um, with that person. And, and I think, you know, just another big thing is you just look at the things that maybe your team doesn't like to do or maybe they're not good at doing and can you automate that and, and, and help get that done. And, and, you know, get them doing what they really want to do. And, and, and to me, that's how you usually find great success is when you have people doing what they're really great at and letting them do that. And then if you could automate the other things, you usually get a really nice outcome. Yeah, a great point. And, uh, you know, talking about the transparency component of this, that's actually one of the original problems we, we were trying to solve was we at TravCon a few years in a row, I was talking to travel nurses and asking them about referrals and heard horror stories of, oh, I referred my friend, found out they were working there six months later. And I was like, I'm never talking to that company again. I didn't get paid a bonus. They didn't follow up with me. So I think adding you know, that transparency to the process can be, can be valuable as well. Uh, and Anastasia, what, how about you when it comes to what problems these, uh, I guess the, the main problems these platforms have helped you solve? Well, I, I would say, yeah, I would say the main problem that it helped us solve was being able to get it all into one place. Um, and, and then to be able to do something with the information. So for us, it, it solved a lot of problems because it automated this whole process for us where we can go back and communicate with a group of people and keep them updated and we can pay them. We know who belongs to who and how that all works. And I think that people really appreciate that. Um, I find a lot of times people don't know what's going on with their referrals entirely. So it's it's been uh, fun to call people and say, hey, by the way, we want <laughs> your referrals and yeah. here's $1,500 or $1,000 or whatever it is. And um, I think people really find that exciting and really honest. But it, I think that all staffing firms in general, at least I would hope, would always mean to meet their obligations with the referral program. We just had no way of really controlling it. Um, and, and seeing who belonged to what and to whom. And, and so now it's just transparent, it's easy. What I really like is the workflow from Bullhorn follows the process and staffing referrals. So you, it, it makes the connection. Um, and so you can see that connection and that's really helpful for us. Yeah, that, that's absolutely great. And um, how about you, Alicia? Well, staffing referrals is definitely solved many pain points that we had um, last year that we were dealing with referrals. It's funny that you said um, that you heard those stories from nurses is that, yeah, we would get calls, you know, hey, I had an uh, a friend work with you guys a year ago and I never got paid. And it's like, at that point, it's like, what do, you know, where is it? How can we track it? There's no way we can, it wasn't written in the contract. Um, 
now, you know, every single lead is coming into Bullhorn and it's, it's all tracked. It's, you know, we have a little tab in Bullhorn under the candidate profile that says who they were referred by. So it's easier for the recruiter to kind of cater that conversation when they get a lead in. Um, and as well, it's brought in an abundance of qualified leads to our recruiters. So they're not really, you know, they're, they're sourcing where we have job boards that we work with sponsored ads, and this is working on the back end and talking to staff that are already working with us. Um, and it's allowing our staff to just engage effectively on social media and online. Um, especially this year, we're working with a very competitive industry and it's, it's only going to get more competitive. So what can we offer to our field staff, our nurses to openly talk about their experience with us? Um, and that's how it's helped us. Well, that's absolutely great. And uh, at least if I remember correctly, you'd also talked a little bit about how this has saved your recruiters time. Um, do you explain a little bit more what that process is like or, or how that, how that works for you? Um, with any program that we bring on, you always get the question of like, oh my, what am I going to do? How do I, how am I going to add this to my day to day? And it's, you know, in our trainings, we, we stress that, Hey, this, you can log into staffing referrals and, you know, post out jobs and use all the resources, but this is already running for the benefit of you. Uh, for them, it's, you know, they're not, they don't even have to touch it. It's in their signature. So somebody can click on it from their signature if they forget to talk about it in a phone call. Um, as soon as we work off of statuses and bullhorn. So as soon as they hit a certain status in bullhorn, they're already asking to be an ambassador with our program. So any human error, we're kind of coming in and, you know, penetrating different types of emails and it, different types of, you know, pop-ups and on our website. So it's already working for them and saving the recruiters time. They're spending a lot. We want them to focus on that customer experience and talking to them and, and, creating a relationship that we want to provide all these resources on the back end for them while they're having those conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then would you, uh, would you guys be open to talk a little bit just about how um, the integration with Bullhorn has gone? I know I can hear that. I've heard that can be a pain point with uh, staffing agencies when they're looking at uh, integrating software. Um, and actually at least I'll start off with uh, back to you once, once more on that front. Definitely. Um, I worked with Brandon Adreen with staffing referrals, um, many calls. Uh, he definitely heard my anxiety about how like, hey, if we take on this program and I'm fully vetting for you guys, this really needs to integrate because I've seen programs we've purchased and we've integrated them and, and, and then where it's kind of a mess. And you know, with staffing referrals, if you go into your dashboard, it's literally a click of a button and you can set it up any way you want it. If you want it to work off of node actions, you can have it work off of that. You can have it work off of statuses. So all I had to do is say, okay, what are the statuses that we want to add into Bullhorn, um, into staffing referrals and to cause that integration? Uh, it literally was a click of a button. I wish I, you know, there was nothing else that happened except for a click of a button to make these two programs speak to each other and integrate effectively. Uh, and I should uh, uh, give a credit here to uh, Anastasia for making it because I, I don't think it was a click of the button with Anastasia and her team. <laughs> we, we, worked through, we worked through a lot of steps to make sure that uh, uh, it was easier for those to, to, to follow. Being the early adopter has its uh, challenges sometimes, but appreciate a lot of guidance uh, from I'm Anastasia on how to, how to make sure it'd be best. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you benefited, Alicia. And, and I'm yeah. surprised that David's still talking to me. But you know, <laughs> but, you know, when you take a, a really great standalone platform like staffing referrals, and then you build out that API between Bullhorn and long before a marketplace partner, it's it's a real exciting time for resource one is because we really we really get to provide some good insight on on how everybody can benefit from that integration. So I'm glad to hear you guys like it. And uh, Tim, anything that you wanted to add on the, the, the integration side of things? Yeah, yeah, just briefly. Uh, again, thanks to Anastasia. She kind of took one for the team on this. But um, yeah, when we got with Brandon <laughs> to, to, to do it, um, I, I think it was like a five minute call. You know, we did a screen share. He pulled up the uh, staff referrals integration page. And, you know, I think the thing that was good for us, um, you know, if there's any folks out there that are using or considering using Bullhorn, is it's a very customizable solution. So if you looked at mine versus Anastasia's or Alicia's, you, you know, there'd be some familiar things, but the way the, the way we name fields or where we put them are very different. 
And, and the nice thing is, is that, you know, your tool, you know, we have our own nomenclature for, you know, the referral process and, and where it lines up in Bullhorn with our views that we've selected. Um, yeah, it was just really easy. I think we were thinking it was going to be a 30 minute call and it was really like a five minute call and pretty darn basic, to be honest. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, with, with people that know Bullhorn well, it, it, it moves very quickly, as long as the business yeah. decisions can be made. Um, and we're actually, we've got a, a question from the audience that I think this is probably valuable for um, uh, anybody on here. Because I know every every uh, seven agency I talk to about referrals, one of the first questions is, well, what are you seeing in the marketplace for what's working in terms of the bonus structure and the bonus amounts? Um, and I think the question was specific to uh, MAS, to you, Alicia. Um, but if any of you, if, it might be something that if we could all chime in on what's what's worked, if you're willing to share that, I think that'd be valuable for the, the people on the call as well. Yeah, so, you go ahead and start it off, Lisa. Yeah. yeah. For MAS, so we also are working with three to four different divisions within um, our company. We have MAS Community Health, MAS uh, Home Care, and MAS Medical Staffing, and we're working with travel and per diem professionals. So there's a lot of different processes and procedures that are completely different on each end. Um, the way we set it up currently, um, we've discussed talking about changing it. Uh, for our travel, we are putting out a cash bonus after their referral works 13 weeks. Right now we're only bonusing the ambassador. Um, there's been talks too about bonusing both and we've been considering that, but it, right now it's based off of what their job title is. Um, and what division they work in. I know for per diem, their referral has to work 40 hours and then they're making upwards of $250 after just 40 hours. So somebody could work one week with us and they're making a quick $250 to $300. On the travel end, we have nurses making upwards of $500 after their referral works uh, 13 weeks or an assignment with us. Um, so it's definitely been a helpful retention uh, kind of add on for us to, like I said, we have, we have nurses that do jump from agency to agency. So by offering something that, you know, they have to work with us, you know, for quite a bit of time to earn extra money, that's been helpful on those numbers. If that answers your question. And, and are you, are you guys, uh, that's, that's great. And are you guys offering uh, bonuses on every job that's up? Uh, is it every job that comes through or only specific ones? Uh, no, any, any um, referrals able to, I'm sorry, any ambassador is able to make money. It doesn't matter what job that they're working. Um, the bonus increments change depending on what division they're in. Like this week, we're signing on right. a couple more divisions with staff and referrals, uh, our community health. Um, so those are behavioral health professionals that we have working in Maine. They probably wouldn't make as much as, you know, uh, in a registered nurse. They're more of a lower level employee. So we did cater our bonuses depending on who they are and what division they're working with. Awesome. Uh, how about you, uh, Tim or Anastasia, anything to share on that front? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we, we revamped our system when we went with staffing referrals. Um, you know, previous, we had different tiers. You know, most of our roles that we do are high-level technology roles, but, you know, we'd base it, you know, on what the, you know, maybe what level was that. But, um, you know, we decided for simplicity's sake and, you know, probably overall fairness just to pay the same referral regardless of the level. Uh, so um, the way that we do it is uh, if you refer somebody in and they get placed and, you know, they stay there X amount of time, uh, you get $1,000. But one tool that we picked up from staff room referrals is actually paying the person who gets referred as well uh, $500. So basically we, we split it up. So if you refer somebody in, you get 1000 and the person that actually gets placed gets 500 bucks. And, and, you know, that was some, with some insight from you guys and, and kind of something that, you know, I think makes both parts feel really good about um, the outcome of it. And uh, it's definitely a nice way to do it. That's great, Tim. How about you, Anastasia? Anything on the structure that you're will open to share? Yeah, I, I would say it's similar um, as Tim. For, for IT, we typically pay out $1,000 uh, after 90 days or 12 weeks. I'm not sure. Some people talk weeks, some people talk months, we talk quarters. Um, but we do $1,000. There are times that we'll run promotional. If we know that we have a very difficult position that's rare to find, we may send out specific communication through HearFish or identify some people specifically that we know and raise that up. 
to 1500 or 2500 depending on the level or the complexity of what we're seeking. But for the most part, we run our referral program uh, even internally to our internal people. So if any of our recruiters talking to a consultant figures out a lead, a salesperson sells it, they can make $1,000. A candidate referring in a client can make 1000 Referring in a person can make a thousand. So we just make it available for any piece of information that provides some business outcome for resource one, then we're going to compensate on it. That, that's great. And uh, I know we are rounding out the time. We got about five minutes left. Um, so last question, I think um, we're going to do a combination, choose your own adventure on how you guys want to answer this, but uh, what are some of the other key components to your tech stack or what are some takeaways that you would like to share uh, specifically with uh, other staffing leaders that are on this call. And Alicia, we'll let you, let you start on this one. Awesome. So uh, up until a couple of years ago, I think we were using a lot of vendors and different programs that really had a hard time integrating with Bullhorn. And, you know, we weren't going to change Bullhorn because we're, we've been so invested in that company for so long. So like I said, a couple of years ago, we started to realize, okay, are what this what we're using for webs right now is the, the integration with the job board isn't working. Um, our referrals, this isn't working as well. What we found is going through Bullhorn Marketplace Partners and listening to Bullhorn on, you know, how to best effectively use a tech stack and what that looks like. Um, we've taken on a couple different programs just recently in the past year, just one of them being staffing referrals. And like I said, it, it started, it solved a pain point that we had with not even tracking referrals. Um, another big company um, this year, we've, we've brought on Text Us and as well as Haley Marketing up until a year ago, and we brought on their job board that's fully integrated with Bullhorn. And that's helped us a ton. We were using some other custom job board that we had built out and it just wasn't working you know certain fields weren't integrating and coming in um it, it just wasn't working for us so definitely do your research and see what works with bullhorn before signing on um but that that's been our biggest help absolutely and how about you tom yeah, we, we've been working with uh, Marketplace Partners for, for a number of years now. One of the original ones we worked with and we still work with is Insight Squared, which is just a great uh, analytics dashboard and uh, is, you know, really done done well for us just getting insight to any of our trends and data. You can basically think of any question you want to get and that tool is going to answer it. So definitely uh, a fan of theirs. Um, obviously here fish long-term partner with those guys from the from day one uh great recruiters actually you know is out of bullhorn engage and if anybody on the call they're bullhorn i would definitely recommend engage when it's back in person but i remember meeting adam conrad uh with travis and jason out at uh out at uh, engage and got to be on beta with him and, and go through that process and it was a great thing um we we work with uh, Staffing Future, which I believe is a partner in the marketplace now, and they're you know they're really great for just tying all the tools together on on your web platform. Uh, you know, uh, Jack and his team do a great job. Um, we work with Cloud Call, but funny enough, we're not really using it that much right now because we're all using Teams. <laughs> <laughs> but it does integrate really well with uh, with Bullhorn. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think if I'm missing any there. No, that, that, that I would say that, and obviously staff and referrals. So um, we're using as well. So we've talked about <laughs> that. That's great. Uh, and Anastasia, I'll let you finish it out. All right, I'll, I'll be quick. So we're a full enterprise stack from front end all the way to back end in terms of uh, how our architecture has been built. So whether you're a candidate, client, we, we run the ATS CRM of Bullhorn back to the BBO, the time reporting, the invoicing uh, to another marketplace partner that processes our payroll to QuickBooks. So it's a full, full enterprise stack. In our case, I'd say that we've probably added on a fair amount of modules and so data and being able to take data and find data and understand where it is and how we leverage it has been our biggest uh, piece. So I would recommend anyone who is looking to build a more aggressive architecture, you should take a look at a good parsing tool 
and a good search agent tool like a Dextra. I think that's a critical foundation and a lot of people uh, people stack in terms of how data is coming in and how your spoolers are reading that data and then determining the source of the data. So then here fish can call that data and communicate to it. Um, I'd also have to say us automating our reference checking and being able to use reference checking is lead gen with terrific is another software product similar to staffing referrals. There's very few out there that really have uh, such a strong integration. I'm a big fan of Terrific and Emmanuel. That's another software that I've been really, uh, in, uh, really aggressively, my team especially, and helping them implement a really nice integration. Um, our Staff Up app that we have, we have an app that's customized. The nice thing is, is that Staffing Referrals is our referral agent. So that app drives all of our referrals into Staffing Referrals. And um, so those are some of my favorites. I have a lot of software in our stack. We love them all. They all serve mm -hmm. us. They're, they're great. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I know we are over by one minute, so we're going to go ahead and close this out. But uh, thanks again for joining Travis, Anastasia, Tim, Alicia. Really appreciate you guys' time. And thanks for, thanks for all of you that were able to join us on this webinar today. Uh, just as a reminder, we will be sending out an email of the recording. And uh, we hope you all have a wonderful weekend. So take care. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.